Hello and welcome to the Go East Film Festival for Central and Eastern European Films. My name is Dominic Streib and I'm the program coordinator of the festival. Uh, next to me on the TV screen, sitting in Los Angeles, uh, Antonetta Castrati, the director of uh, ZANA, a film which should have been shown in the cinemas at Go East this year, unfortunately just taking place online, but uh, thanks that you're here for a little Q&A. Zana seems uh, to me a very personal film by yours. Uh, also, it's dedicated to your sister and mother at the, at the credits. And I also read you did a lot of research uh, and talked to women who have lost their child in the Kosovo war. So can you tell us a bit more about the background and the development of the script and how long have you the fiction film for this topic in mind? So Yeah, so... Uh... I, in terms of uh, actual the fiction, I think it's like four or five years, but this honestly was the reason what happened to my family during the war and the whole experience of it was the reason why I even got involved in filmmaking in the first place. And it's been really incubating within me for a very long time. And I think I really had to have that distance and figure out what's the story I, I, I wanted to tell. and. Once I became a mother for me, and I have two daughters, uh, I couldn't imagine being in the war. And knowing from the experience I've had of losing my mother and sister, I really had to ask this question, would I be able to continue if I lost a child? You know, and I think it's, this is my biggest fear, and I really wanted to focus on that and bring all the experience that I've had personally with um, the loss, PTSD, and so the process took like four or five years. Um, I went and interviewed a lot of women in the villages and uh, like Zana is, I, it, one aspect of Zana is uh, the nightmares, uh, which never end. And I was always really interested with on this because of my own experiences and the idea of how dreams are something you cannot control. And even doing the data and you're trying to move on and then comes the night and there is this parallel reality that you cannot control. And I wanted to find out with women whether that was the experience they had and was interested in their dreams. Um, women who have lost children, you know, and, uh, and also like how they were doing, you know. So that process took some time. So it's all incorporated somehow in the script. Um, I watched uh, Zana a few days ago again and uh, I realized something that uh, wasn't uh, come to my mind so clearly in the, when I first saw the film. It is uh, the visual concept of the film. For me, it's very intelligent visual approach because you have these uh, landscape with these bright, uh, bright colors, the green grass, and everything seems fruitful and uh, it's a good world, more or less. But then you have these uh, horrific nightmare uh, parts, which are kind of a sometimes seen from a horror film or from some surrealistic film. And uh, for me, there are these two layers. There is one layer, you have this uh, bright landscape, and this bright landscape uh, hides the trauma of war for me a bit. Also when, when uh, Luma uh, collects the eggs and there is the bullet under the, the, the eggs. So it's, it's a surface uh, for, for the history. And on the other hand, there is uh, this fruitful land and you have Luma who lives in this world but can't get pregnant. There's the surface who hides the history. Is that also something which is happening in, in Kosovo with the war? And also, y you don't accept your traumas. You, it's just the surface, everything. Yeah, I, I think from the beginning, I mean, this was, a, uh, this was something that uh, I had in mind. And for me, it was always interesting, the contrast of this really luscious, beautiful. And it, even from the war, everything was just so beautiful and even more beautiful than normal because things weren't, nobody was working on the fields. So I remember being in the village and there's just, everything is lush and it's the same after the war. So I really wanted to show this contrast of this bounty, you know, and then the trauma that's like hidden. And I, so I, I wanted to make this contrast, you know, with her, also with her day, like, you know, where, Things are really not moving and it's very static, you know. She's static, even though like you have this beautiful nature and the dreams were something that 
like getting into her psyche and uh, the sense of urgency. So we had this like visual approach from the beginning to show this contrast, you know, mm -hmm. where she's like constantly moving and um, kind of in a journey, whereas like during her day, she's like blocked, blocked out. And yeah, and also in terms of fertility, you know, and I, I wanted to make all this um, like uh, parallels also with, uh, with uh, nature, but also with animals. Um, and with a cow and uh, bird. So regard, uh, regarding, um, yeah, the, our society has really had a hard time kind of to deal with it. And I think it's normal maybe after the war because you need this distance, but we don't really communicate much. We don't have a emotional language. Mm -hmm. As a society we we don't talk about feelings you know so for me this has been always a very interesting aspect of it but also in terms of uh, Illume, i really also i wanted to show this idea of how she's like not really moving i mean for me one of the aspects that was really interesting with her wasn't just the idea of that she has this grief and she cannot move on but also how she's like there's like an altered condition of life for her and she's barely inching along and how that death really has come into her life and she's uh, in a limbo in between between these two worlds and that's what happens when someone close to you dies but especially for mothers because the time is interconnected you know the time of the child and yours is so interconnected that you stopped moving in a certain way you know so this was also uh, one of the ideas, uh, the concept that I was trying to bring out. Like she has become the grief, you know, it's not about what she is really feeling, but what she represents and how the death is kind of like, kind of hanging, you know, in some way. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, also when, when you mentioned now this limbo thing, uh, yeah. there is uh, the, the, it's not uh, the ending, but at the end where, where uh, Zana is shot, there is in in one scene these uh, these change from this bright mood to the dark mood. When the soldiers came, everything darkens. The 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 the, the, the former really green grass gets kind of yeah really dark, nearly black grass. And I find it really astonishing how you you managed to put this feeling in this one scene. Uh, I really adore it. And another aspect is uh, the film plays in a for me, total patriarchal society and uh, society in which uh, mysticism is given a great role. In this society, Lumi seems to, to be the wife, to be the mother, and if she can't give another child anymore, she, she could be replaced by another woman. And when the doctor make a diagnosis and nothing helps, they go to wonder healers. In co rural Kosovo, is this still uh, like uh, this patriarchal society, can you tell about uh, this something? Yes, for sure. I mean, there are different levels because of it's also land of there's a lot of contrast, you know, uh, it's very different even within a village, you know, but uh, even in the cities, the idea of like a woman, it's not even a question whether you want to have a kid or not, you know, it's uh, you're supposed to, you're a woman. And if you don't have kids, you don't have value. So that's something that it's even in the cities, you know, but I, I think in terms of black magic too, it was, um, it's something also for me, it was also very familiar because I grew up in the village and I was very, always intrigued when I was a young girl with uh, uh, seeing my cousins or like relatives, you know, and always women, like young girls or brides when they got married, because there is so much pressure over women, you know, when they get married and it's more in a traditional sense, they would have, um, some psychological or emotional issues they were sent to the healers and it was always this aspect that was also very suppressing for them you know and further imprisoned them and i was always intrigued uh, on that like anybody who was like free i mean and this has happened in other cultures you know this is not something new and in kosovo it's still i would say yeah yeah it's still um because there's a stigma around psychiatry and psychologists and uh, people out of desperation, they they go to seek the healers, and it's uh, because it gives them an answer. It's just easier because it's not something that you should be talking about and figuring out. It's something that um, you know it's out of your control, and it's easier to have an answer. And in this case, 
even in the cities people would do it you know it's for different reasons you know but uh, but i think what has happened that's different is after the war we've had um we used to have these traditional healers that just give you an amulet and talk to you but now we have a whole like commercializing of this the black magic you know it's a, it's a little new you know I did a documentary in 2009 called Seeking Magic uh, that was following women who were sent to these healers. Mm -hmm. And a lot of what you see in the film is actually like, you know, the scene, the beating. It's taken from real, uh, because I, uh, my background is in documentary film. Mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, I always take a lot of like real, real stories, you know. Uh, yeah. Like I, events and characters, you know, the, that, uh, so I would say even though Zona is fictional, a lot of it is uh, really based on real stuff. Yeah, and also the, the I think it's the last visit uh, at these TV wonder, uh, yeah. the black magic guy. It seems a bit like a witch trial when they say oh, you're obsessed by, by something, you are not Luma. It's, it's a really horrific uh, scene. Can you tell us a bit more about these horror elements also in the film? Uh, yeah, it, it's interesting because, it, of course, there are horror elements. To me, I don't really consider, you know, there are horror because real life is horror, you know, and uh, all the dreams are the horror. And it's taken from my own uh, experiences with PTSD and nightmares and night terrors. I've, uh, it's been 20 years, I, I, I still have them. And actually what we see there, it's a diluted version of my dreams. And for me, this uh, sort of physical aspect and um, uh, the brutality of war and what it does to the body was something that has been really hard for me to overcome. And that's what appears in the dreams. And this is something that was for me an essential element of it. I didn't want, it, it wasn't like I was going for having horror in my film or, oh, this is the way, but this is actually essential part of the story mm. and what is really hard to, to overcome, the brutality of it. And uh, regardless, like I said, this idea, like you have this parallel reality that you cannot escape because that's why I was interested in dreams and not flashbacks, because it's something you cannot control and it comes over and over, you know, you're thrown with this, uh, with the reality of it almost every night. And I wanted to find a way to, to, to tell that and the weight of it. So that's why for me, it's really, it was kind of for me, the most important part was to, in the end, for the audience to feel the weight of what it means to lose a life, you know? And for me, that was the priority. And of course there are all these other things, you know? Yeah, so it, but I really wanted with that feeling of what, and I wanted to uh, have a very subjective kind of um, approach to it, you know, with the main character that we are really with her, you know, as she is coming to terms and finding, you know, because she has also found a way to like, kind of manage it in some way, not manage it, but block it. Yeah. And, but she is not left alone in that even, you know, so. So the horror elements are no horror, so they are real. Yeah. Maybe as the last question, you can tell us uh, something how uh, how the reaction and of the audience and also the press uh, was in, in in Kosovo regarding the uh, film. Yes, we had a, we had a theatrical release because, um, last last uh, winter, and it was overwhelming. Uh, a lot of people went to see it. Like the first weekend, it. Uh, surpass all the big Hollywood films, which I was really surprised because Zona is a heavy story. I, I wasn't expecting teenagers who haven't even experienced the war that uh, they were going to see it. It became viral, but um, it was overwhelming. I, I think, I don't know, people have explained it. It's hard to also talk about, you know, from my perspective as a filmmaker, the, but I think it was People talked about this idea, it was like almost this collective grieving, you know, because we haven't really, we're just starting to kind of dig that. So a lot of people are crying, you know, and uh, like talking about it. And I had people talk about how 
it really even men or you know it wasn't like somehow connected to just women you know when I was uh, even men were really re received it well and I thought it would be a little bit controversial because of the abortion because of she's going against the society's like expectations but uh, I didn't receive any of that I think they were just somehow surrendered to the film and the emotions of it you know and but it was kind of a really big it was uh, it screened for almost two months and it was full it was quite uh, yeah like a kind of a collective processing you know for a lot of people and found the piece of themselves in it you know even though this is through female character and it's so uh, specific but i think um yeah from uh, from reactions you know on the media and just people that have written to me messages and as i remember right it was also the oscar nominee for from uh, yeah, Civil yeah. War. yeah 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 okay. okay thank you antonetta for these uh little talk and the insights for Sana. Thank you so much. I know it's early here. I'm collecting my thoughts. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. And uh, to our audience, uh, you can watch Sana at uh, X Ground On Demand as well as the other competition films. And also you can vote on uh, X Ground On Demand for our audience award, which will be given this year.